lies beyond death. The Hindu might claim reincarnation. The Muslim seeks a paradise with Allah conspicuous by his absence. The atheist asserts that there is nothing beyond death. What is the Christian hope? Well, in words that are read out at funerals the world over, Jesus says this, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, or in many mansions in the old translation. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Sometimes these verses can conjure up odd images in people's minds. We imagine Jesus going back to heaven to do a bit of DIY so that the, you know, our room in, in, in the heavenly mansion will be ready. Um, but that's not really what he's talking about here. Um, my father's household has many mansions. That's what I said in the old translations, but has many abodes, has many residences might be a better translation. Jesus is telling us about the roominess of the father's household. There's always space for more. And when he says he's going to prepare a place for us, He's not talking about celestial renovations. He's not talking about getting a whole bunch of angels to do the DIY and the build a decorator thing. No, it is the going of Jesus that prepares our place. Jesus is speaking of the cross. His departure is his death on Calvary. Therefore, his going secures my place in heaven. So Jesus is not telling us that he's off to do a spot of builder decorating. He's, he's telling us of the cross that secures our eternity. But more than this, he's telling us what that eternity will be like. And what is the eternal hope that Jesus points us to? It's himself. In verse 3, he says, I will come back to you and I will take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Here's the whole purpose of Christ's coming and of his going. John's Gospel begins by telling us that Jesus was with God in the beginning. The Greek puts it more literally that Christ was towards the Father from eternity. He faces his Father and is ever drawn to him, seeing his face and resting in his arms. What then is salvation? Salvation is being drawn by the Spirit of God into the Son of God that he might bring us to be where he is. As he prays in John chapter 17 and verse 24, he says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Eternal life is being with Jesus, seeing his glory, sharing in his love. That's heaven. But again, you might think that, that that's too esoteric. What will that be like? What will heaven be like? Well, John 13 has just given us a picture. As Jesus says these words that we began with in John 14, he is at the meal that is described in John 13. And there they were. They, they'd enjoyed a good meal with good friends and good wine. They were relaxing around the table. One guest seemed even more relaxed than the rest. In John chapter 13, verse 23, one of the disciples, the one that Jesus loved, was reclining next to Jesus. Uh, the old King James translation put it more literally. This disciple was leaning on Jesus' bosom. Here we assume is John himself, the author of this gospel. As he tells the story, he remembers leaning back against Jesus, hearing his heartbeat, listening to his breathing. John was one of the younger, if not the youngest, disciple, and he calls himself the beloved disciple. Clearly, he felt completely at ease with Jesus, leaning back on his chest. Jesus, Jesus had just washed their feet. He was teaching them about his father, and because it was Passover, they would have been singing hymns around the dinner table. Can you imagine that time together? Good food, good singing, good wine, good company. And there is the beloved disciple, in the arms of Jesus. John knew that he could find rest, peace, and welcome in the arms of Jesus. And Jesus is the one who has eternal rest, peace, and welcome in the arms of his Father. So those few minutes around the dinner table are just a picture of our everlasting hope. Those who are beloved of Jesus are invited into his arms, even as Jesus rests secure in the Father's arms. That's heaven. That is 
the life we have to come. You know, no other view of the afterlife comes close to the personal hope of the Christian. Other religions may go into detail about the pleasures of paradise, but for Christians, the focus is different. Christ is our life and He is our hope. Whatever else the future holds, this is the heart of it. Warm, personal, feasting joy in the company of Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled.